guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Footy Game Day Squad Fantasy Show. As you can see, there's only two people here. We're rolling with two. It's me and Kerm. We will be your hosts today, and we are super <laughs> excited to talk to you about the round of 16 and everything that happened. Kerm, how are you going today, mate? Good, mate. Good. As you've said, our captain, Cal, he's left us. We're on our own. I feel like two babies left in a little cot here. Um, but no, hopefully Cal's doing all right, and we'll, we'll take the reins from here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, Callum sends his apologies that he couldn't make the episode, but we are going to take the reins today, untapped, untamed. I'm super excited. <laughs> and how we start off the episode is going into our team performance review. And Kerm, I want to throw this to you because I had a look at the leaderboards and I was bloody stoked with what I saw. So do you want to take us through your round of 16? Gladly, mate, gladly. So the Kermies, we finished first in the Open League, taking out the first seasonal game, finishing first. We had some good performances, which we'll talk about later, but to finish first in the first seasonal game, I'll take that every day of the week. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Your team just played awesome. Everyone's putting up big numbers. <laughs> uh, man, I'm very jealous, very jealous. But as you guys know, I am in the Caps League. I finished third this week. In, Still good. of course, the weekly and seasonal ranks, which is very good. I uh, had some unfortunate things happen, which I'm sure a lot of fantasy managers went through this week, which I'll touch on a little bit later because I have that there. But uh, yeah, it seemed like everyone's scores were down this week, especially in the Caps League. Uh, we got to 2,000, around that 2,300 last week. This week, only 1,700, and that was enough to get me third, which I think I'm quite blessed with. I don't think that'll be enough in weeks to come, so I'm hoping we can bounce back, put up a little bit more. But all things considered, it was still a great round for me. I cracked the yeah. top 10, no complaints here, and yeah, both of us are smiling. Yeah. But um, I did notice one thing, Kerm, and I want to quickly go through it with you. Is that When I was looking at the leaderboards, there was a particular <laughs> name missing, which was there last week, and this same person is missing from the show um, it's been leaked that maybe these two are linked. Yes. Um, maybe he couldn't bring himself to being on the show. <laughs> Who knows? But the peanut butters didn't do so great this week. No. Um, they were unfortunately in a similar situation to me, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, but yeah, didn't crack the top 10. He's going to be looking to bounce back and I'm sure he's going to go through his strategy moving forward in our preview show, which will be out in a couple of days. So yeah, I'm super excited to hear that from him. Hey. Yeah, he had some really stick performances and he'll be fuming with that performance. So he'll be looking to get back in the next week as quick as possible. But yeah, those suggestions that the two are linked, that he's not here and his team stunk it up. I think there's something in that. Yeah, yeah, there's some weight to that. Um, there's some evidence. But let's get into our next little segment here for the moment of the round. And Kerm, let's do it. I want to go through what did you select as round 16's best moment? So my moment of the round was a player, actually. I've highlighted Jeremy Cameron, who went off his head for one of the performances of the year. He kicked the four year. goals, had 30 disposals, 10 marks, and a mammoth 172 GDS fantasy points. For As I said at the start, this was an unbelievable performance from Jeremy, Maca Jeremy Cameron. Playing through the middle sometimes, also moving forward, kicking goals, impacting the game with his foot, inside 50s, everything. He just did absolutely everything you can do filled out the stat sheet so jeremy cameron had a massive game and that was my moment of the round and mate what a great moment and fantasy managers looking at that uh got a grin from oh you're laughing you right now you are um, laughing you have a key forward like that who's getting time in the midfield getting touches disposals that is honestly a cheat code and anyone who has jeremy cameron right now is going to be eager to see what he can do next week. Is he going to have this same role, or was this a one-and-done type of situation? That's it. Can he back and it up? We will find out soon. What about your moment of the round, mate? Yeah, I'd love to go through it. And I'm really sad uh, Sorry, Callum isn't here because this moment of the round came from this game, or his game, from his Port Power. It was Hayden Ooh. Young's ha hanger sorry, versus Port. Oh, this was something to witness. I don't know yep. if you guys saw it. I've got a picture here, uh, shot by shot of it. It is unbelievable. This is mark of the year contention type of stuff. Um, his body just, he lost control. But to still come down with the ball, take the mark. Wow. Just wow. i got nothing else to say. I'm a bit speechless when I looked at it. It was so good. And I think Mitch Georgiades took one for, for Port earlier on in the game as well. It was just a massive... Hanger game. 
they could call it the Specky game, but Hayden Young is such a fantasy start. He's so young and going to be so good for so long. Um, this Specky is just something to go along the lines of it. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, and what a highlight. And honestly, the degree of difficulty on this mark was at least 1,000 out of 10. Yes. To have your body yes. rotating, take control, like just unbelievable. I, I could not believe my eyes. And as you said, was it Giorgiani as well taking one in the game? It was just highlights on highlights, mark of the year contention after mark of the year contention. Beautiful stuff. What a round we had. But let's get into our next little part here. We're going to go through a bit of a fantasy review. I'm going to take you through the studs. We're both going to take you through the duds. And then Kerm's going to take you through his rookie watch of the round. Trying to give you a better a bit sorry, of fantasy insight heading into the next couple of rounds. As you guys know, we have our seasonal comp for game day squad. It is finally up and ready to go. We are super excited. If you don't know what game day squad is... Go down below, check us out. We have all of our links in the description. If you want to chat with us, discuss, whatever, we have a Discord down there below as well. It's free to join, so why not? And all of our socials are there. So if you don't want to contact us on the Discord and you have other means, please do. We would love to chat with you. But let's move on. My start of the round. I think you know who my number one start of the round is. You sort of just touched on this guy. and His name is Jeremy Cameron. This guy had... 172 game day squad fantasy points, no multipliers on top. That is from your bronze, Jeremy Cameron. That yeah. is unbelievable. <laughs> it's such a big day. It it like to get that from a forward as well. The forwards have been identified as a as a as a positional group that can't score well at the moment. But Jeremy Cameron stood up yep. when they needed it most. Yeah, absolutely. And when we're talking of studs, um, you know the cats dismantled the kangaroos in this one. This was tough to watch if you did watch it. Uh, he had 30 disposals. He kicked four goals, three. Let's just mention three behinds. If he kicks Could another three better. goals there, <laughs> it's a 200-point game. That is, that is just out of this world. Um, as I mentioned before, fantasy managers are going to be eager to see what's going to happen next week with Jeremy Cameron's role in the team. And yeah, I'm super pumped to watch it as well because that is really exciting stuff. But I'll move on to a defender who I nominated at the start of the round. It is the Saints' own Jack Sinclair, who scored 169 Stop. game day squad fantasy points in this one. He had himself a bloody game. Um, he finished with 28 kicks alone, scoring him you know the 169 points without a multiplier again. It's just absurd numbers from a defender. Um, that's midfield sort of stats right there. That's what you expect from your Petrarcas, your Mills, your Tuke yeah. Millers, those type of people. Not from your Sinclair. So to get that on a round, what a bloody effort from him. Well-deserved stud there. Absolutely. Been good all year too, Jack Sinclair. He's been so amazing. Oh, yeah. The Saints are really happy with um, how he's been performing for sure. Let's get into my midfield selection. It is going to go to Christian... Petrarca, and if Petrarca kicks three goals in a game, then there is some bloody problems on the field because you know, we know him as the inside mid, the unselfish setting everyone up. But when he's getting three of his own, there is a problem. He's scoring 163 game day squad fantasy points along with it as well. Plenty of involvement from him. Um, what a start performance. We've mentioned him all year. I think everyone by now knows our position on Petrarca, how good he is and how much we love seeing him play. So another start performance and well-deserved again. But this last one, Kerm, I've nominated one more person. This one hurts. Ooh. It really <laughs> hurts. It's Zach Merritt from the Essendon Oh, okay. Runners. He had a great game. He versed my Sydney Swans on the weekend, and I don't really want to talk about the game because the Swans had a bloody meltdown in the third quarter, kicking two goals, eight behinds. That's the last I'm going to say of it. I want to give Zach Merritt his flowers. He had a really, really good game. He scored 154 game day squad fantasy points, and like Petrarca, kicked three goals, playing from the midfield. So he dominated us in the middle. He dominated us inside forward 50. What a performance um, and a well-deserved stud performance, uh, stud nomination here for the round. When you look at the Essendon season, they really needed this one. It lifted, I'm sure, a lot of the spirits of not only the fans, but the club because they have been going through it. But credit to them. What a great win. And after putting Stringer on the hot seat the week before, yep. saying how bad Essendon were as a team, um, I deserve this. I definitely <laughs> deserve this. I shouldn't have done that. But we're going to move on 
to the duds of the round. And Kerm, do you want to take it away with your nominations? Yes, I'm going to really attack this dud of the round, and it's Jordan Dugowie. Um With all the off-field issues going on, Collingwood, they're doing good on-field, but if they can have Jordan Dugowie at their best, that takes them to another level. And he could only muster yeah. up 11 disposals, didn't impact the scoreboard at all, and 46 GDS fantasy points. So going into the season, Jordan Dugowie was ranked as a top 10 forward. I can't see that for the rest of the season now because Jordan Dugowie looks absolutely soulless out there at the moment it's just not Jordan Dugowie that we've come to know and love oh mate can we talk about do you reckon there's a bit of head noise going on there the oh moment? there's got to be a lot of there's internal be. things like how are you supposed to play at your best you know with all of the news and just it just felt like I came back from Boston and it was just Dugowie 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 yeah, everywhere yeah. everyone was talking about it um you got a feel for him um but at the you same do. time it isn't good enough you're right 11 disposals from a player that we so highly regard on the show for so long he was in the top six of the forwards for the year in fantasy score yep. but i agree with you i agree with you i don't think he's can't there trust anymore. him can't trust him going forward unfortunately and i'll take us into our second dud of the round and it's someone we spoke about in our last show and it's mitch lewis now i spoke about him Ooh. in our round 16 recap rises and fallers blog and i spoke about how goal dependent he has become and he didn't score a goal he he was on a streak of a goal in every game that he had played so far in season 2022. And when he scores zero goals, you get 50 GDS fantasy points, which is stinky. So Mitch Lewis, you've got to kick, kick goals. And if he doesn't, you're going to get those stud, those dud games, unfortunately. Mate, you're too right. And we sort of touched on that literally in the preview show before with Callum's yep. hot seat nomination of how goal dependent he was. And he clearly got that from your vlog. So credit to you giving him that insight and if you guys haven't checked out Combs blogs we're going to link it down below in the description he gives you great fantasy insight if you want to have a look at some players he's got rises and fallers there's so much content he's releasing go check it out go absorb it all it is sick thank you mate no worries you deserve <laughs> your flowers mate when the, when the time has come but let me get into my two dud nominations of the round the first one is very close to home again it's going to be in Callum Mills now Callum <laughs> Mills season you. this year Unbelievable. I have no complaints. If you're a fantasy uh, manager and you took on a Callum Mills in a draft or in our game as a card, which I don't have yet, so I'm really jealous if you do. Um, you're stoked. You're stoked with the season he's having. You're not happy with the game he just had, though. You're expecting no. at least the triple-digit score from him. He wasn't even close to getting that. I think he got like 70 or 60 for the game. That is yeah. just not good enough from Callum Mills. And we'll see how he bounces back in the next week. Not only him, but the Sydney Swans, because they've just had a terrible defeat. We're right in the contention in top eight. It is a very close race. We need to bounce back, and I'm hoping we can deliver next week. You guys will, and so will Callum Mills. Hold the faith with Callum Mills. Yeah, mate, I, I do believe. But we do have a tough matchup, I think, against the Bulldogs, if I'm not mistaken, Ooh. this week on Friday night. That'll be fun bit to watch. Bit of a Friday night special. Pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah, but two red-hot teams right there. Oh, one red-hot team, the other one that's stinky <laughs> in my swans. But we'll see how it goes. My second nomination, though, is going to be Toby Green from the GWS Giants. As we know, Toby Green has had a bit of an up-and-down season, having a suspension, not being able to play, and then finally coming back. And he has had some games of absolute dominance, kicking seven goals in weeks prior. But this wasn't one of those games. He just was very quiet, had very little involvement, and didn't even have a score for the game. He went zero for zero That's in scoring. That's crazy. Yeah. When you're looking at Toby Green and the impact that he has, you at least expect something on the scoreboard. Just could not deliver that on the weekend. Very unlucky. Again, this is another player that we will be expecting to bounce back. But that's all pending, and we will see how it goes. But, Kerm, this is my favorite part because, as you know, Gang Day Squad is a dynasty game and we love your rookie watch because these are the type of players that you want and want to be keeping hold on to for the many years to come of fantasy success so take us through your rookie watch of round 16. My first one here is someone who's not even in the game yet because he was a mid-season rookie draft included and that is Massimo D'Ambrosio of the Essendon Bombers. And he had Ooh. 23 disposals going at an insane clip Six marks and 90 GDS fantasy points. I think he's going to be someone you're going to want to watch over the next few weeks because if he can keep this 
this consistency up, then he's going to be a really big player to, to keep an eye on going into next season when he is in our game. So Massimo D'Ambrosio is definitely a name to watch going into next year. The next guy needs no inclusions and introductions. That is Nick Dacos from Collingwood. He is having an insane year, and he's already probably got his name on the Rookie of the Year trophy with 37 disposals last week, four marks, and a massive 138 GDS fantasy points. You could almost start him already. It's insane the things that Nick Dacos is doing in his rookie year. He's going about Scotty Pendlebury in his prime at the moment with 37 disposals. So Nick Dacos is definitely someone we're keeping an eye on because that name is going to take you a long way in your dynasty. Oh, yes. Yes. And the next guy is someone that Toby Green in your dud list is probably going to be keeping an eye on himself is Callum Brown from GWS. He played deep forward, having 13 disposals, six tackles, and four goals to go with it in its debut, which is just like, as you do, having a debut with four goals. 116 GDS fantasy points took him a long way, and he's someone to keep an eye on over the next few weeks to see if he can back it up. Mate, love that list, but Essendon going back-to-back weeks with players in there, Nick yeah. Martin and now your guy. So, you know, with all the failure that Essendon has had this year, there is a shining light there in there terms are of some. fantasy yep. and the future. But let's get into a segment where we have to do a little bit of self-reflection of we the do. round. It is our right and wrong segment. Kerm, did you want to kick us off this round? I will. And what I got right is Nathan Broad. So Nathan Broad was on my hot seat last week, but keeping the trust in him paid off massively for me. He had a big day scoring 170 points with my diamond Nathan Broad. So that rarity got me over the line a little bit, but Nathan Broad himself had a very big day. So I got that one right. But onto the other side, what I got wrong... I benched my gold Daniel Rioli, which is in some of his career best form, by the way. He's playing unreal off halfback and that high wing role for Richmond. Um, and I benched him in place of my Riley West. So Riley West had a bit of a stick for the Bulldogs and Daniel Rioli had a good day, but that's something we got wrong for the Kermies. We're not going to think about it too much and dwell on it. We'll go on to next week. But Daniel Rioli might find himself back into my starting side. Yeah, well, there's not too many things you got wrong this week, brother. Um, <laughs> as you know, we went through before with how you finished. Um, what a great week from you, but fair enough. Uh, let me get into my right and wrong. Right? Yes. Is Zach Tui being a starter in my back line. I've had some tough decisions to make. As you guys understand, I am in the capped league, so I have to consider salary cap, the gradings of the players that I have. But there are a couple of people that I could have started over him. He's someone I've stuck to my guns with. And as Kerm preaches... Opportunity equals productivity on the field. And this has been the case for Zach Tui over the past couple of weeks. He's putting up respectable scores and becoming what I would call a budget beast in footy caps league. So, Oh, I like that. Yeah, if you've got a bronze or a silver Zach Tui, he is just a player you can put in there and he's just going to, he's not going to give you the highest score, but his floor is quite low and his ceiling is quite low as well. But you just know what you're going to get week in, week out from him. And he's someone that I can start with some confidence moving forward. What did I get wrong though? Um, As you can see from my little image here, Couple things. Uh, I have Luke Jackson and Aaron Hall starting this oh, week, no. and this was the same case with our peanut butters, our very own Callum's team as well, which is why he didn't do so well in the round. But um, that is why I didn't do so well in the round, and why my score was down so much from last week. Um, I had two players out. Um, I definitely wasn't the right move for me. Um, there's, I don't know if there's a lot I could have done. No. But in the long run, I've played with two players down. That is just not a good not a good image for a fantasy manager. In the first week of seasonal comps, Like I couldn't have got the timing any worse. It is what it is, though. We're going to continue to look forward and be optimistic about the opportunities that are going to come soon because I'm already super pumped for next week. Yep, the Zeus Cannons are going to be right back at the top of the top the Cap League, I think. Yes, bang, bang. Get us back <laughs> up there, mate. I'm super excited. But let's get into a segment here, and I think you're going to take us away here, Kern, with buy, sell, and hold for this round. So do you want to... I am. So this is going to feature on our Game Day Footy Instagram page, which will be linked down below later on in the week. So let us know your thoughts on that Instagram post. But put your dynasty cap on because I want to ask you in buy, sell, or hold, who are you taking out of young ruck studs, Tim English, Sean Darcy, and Luke Jackson? 
Wow. That is a list. Big question. Big, big question. That is a list. Um, I think buy, for me hold. right now, buy has to be Tim English only because he is the outright starter. He yeah. has no competition for his position. You know he's going to get maximal minutes, maximal opportunity every night. Sell... I think has to be Sean Darcy. Again, the same situation. Luke Jackson is only going... For, sorry, Luke Jackson's going to be my hold because I think he's the most talented out of the three. But my problem with him is that he's currently behind Max Gorn, who, yes. as we know, yeah. is a pretty good ruckman in his own right <laughs> in the league. And that's a little bit concerning when you have such a talented player like Luke Jackson being behind you know, one of the best in the game in Max Gorn. Um, I'm going to hold on to him because I feel like it's high risk, high reward if Jackson is to eventually move on or if Gorn is to eventually move on and he was to secure a starting role for the Demons. So yeah, I'm going to go buy, lock it in, Team English, sell Sean Darcy, hold Luke Jackson. I like that. I like that. And you can't really go wrong with either three, but later on in the week on our Instagram page, definitely let us know in the comments down below who you would go. Absolutely. And I think that's going to wrap us up there, Kerm, for another episode of the Footy Game Day Squad Review Show. Thank you very much, guys, for checking in. If you haven't already and you've come this far, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push those post notifications on just so you're notified about when we upload so you can get all the fantasy content, juice, whatever you want to call it, that you need and fill up your week. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll catch you in the next episode.